every time I show, you know, the sort of a lot of the visualization projects I've been working on to my colleagues in the sciences, they get ideas. I get ideas from what they're doing. Um, uh, you know, the people in the arts and design know a lot about visual design, have all sorts of ideas and imagination. It's a win-win to bring to bring people into the visualization facilities and involve them in it. And we, of course, love uh, getting access to visualization facilities that allow us to explore uh, different things. I've talked about dissemination. Um, something which is as true of the sciences and engineering as it is of the arts and humanities is if you only support one part of the research process, you're probably not going to get a lot of people using your facilities. You need to look at the full process. And in the case of the humanities, that includes digitization, you know, getting the materials into the form that they can be studied with uh, computational tools, and as I said, the dissemination out the other end. And uh, I, I know that uh, UND is already thinking that way because I've been talking to some of the people working on projects, and I'm sure you have the same problem in other fields. Um, uh, a second, while I'm on that subject, I should say you have all sorts of people you can partner with. There isn't a research library in the Western world who's not trying to figure out how to set up a trusted digital repository. So, you know, uh, cyber infrastructure teams, you don't have to go it along. The libraries are already working on this stuff and you can partner and save, uh, save each other a lot of grief. Um, lastly, uh, one thing that came out of one of the last things that we ran is uh, there's already a high level of computer literacy in the humanities. Uh, we, we had this reputation for being Luddites, and some of us like to pretend to be Luddites, but in fact, there's all sorts of projects happening. Uh, but we often are using different tools. We don't have a culture of using Fortran. We tend to be using a lot of um, uh, environments like PHP and Ruby because we're doing a lot of uh, websites and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and so it, it makes sense to find out what we're using and to find ways to support that with... Uh, in your cyber infrastructure. I'm going to end, if you could switch to the, the next slide. <clears throat> um, this uh, Mind the Gap is a workshop uh, that I think was extraordinarily successful. It was a workshop where we brought together, uh, we had people apply in teams, interdisciplinary teams, um, to spend a week here with very good access to um, very good access to the Westgrid and, for that matter, also Sharknet high-performance computing clusters and access to the staff. So we, we, we got funding, not a lot, but we also worked closely with the, uh, the HPC staff. We then sent out a call. We had people apply describing their project and who they would bring as a team, and we accepted, I think it was about seven or eight teams. Um, uh, we brought the teams in for a week. And we trained them so they could use the cluster. We helped them uh, write stuff and do trial runs. And we got a whole series of projects that went from blue sky to actually having something that ran on the cluster. And one of the slides further back actually showed the, some of the usage over that week. We, we, we actually, for the week, we were pretty significant users of the local, uh, the local cluster. So that's one example, and we've actually put up a report on that, and you can see how our schedule worked. If you're thinking of organizing this sort of unconference hack fest where you bring a bunch of people together, uh, we'd be happy to talk to you. It's a great way to kickstart things and to get some real projects to the point where they can start writing the NEH grants, they get digging into data grants. So I'm going to switch to my last uh, slide here. Uh, this is the slide with references. And the slide has been a little bit chopped off at the bottom. Uh, so I'll tell you what the bottom one is. Uh, the first one is the link to the Mind the Gap uh, thing. The second one is a link to a website about uh, HPC and the Arts and Humanities, which has a whole mess of examples. Uh, so you can go and look at different examples. Uh, and then I thought it would be useful to sort of show uh, there's a link to the web lab. There's a link to the Software Studies uh, Institute and something I did not put up there, and I realize it's actually on the slide, uh, the updated slides here, uh, a very important result, uh, report that was commissioned by the ACLS uh, is a report, um, the chief, the, the lead was John Unsworth at uh, UIUC, and the report is called Our Cultural Commonwealth, and it's a report about cyber infrastructure needs in the humanities and interpretive social sciences. 
So if you're looking for, uh, you know, the sort of background information, it's a nice big juicy report. It followed on the NSF funded cyber infrastructure reports, and that's a good place to look for other stuff. And if you just Google our, our cultural commonwealth, it'll take you to the site and the PDF, which you can download. Um, I'm going to, if, uh, if you could actually switch back to the very first slide, which has my email on it and some websites where you can find me at, and then, um, wow, look at that. I was worried I was going to go over. I always go over. This has got to be a first for me I, where I didn't go over. So now I'd be happy to take questions and um, go for it. I'm not hearing anything, which could be the equipment or people working their way to the podium or the fact that I've answered every possible question we have. Or, Dr. Or Rockwell. Dr. Rockwell, thank you very much. Uh, I was, it's more of a comment uh, about what we've been doing here today. This is David Gibbers, uh, North Dakota EPSCOR co-project director for your information. I was struck by the comment by Dr. Demon this morning and you really this collaboration of bringing new people in to this computational world. He's, he, he made the comment, you know, it doesn't cost the computer centers, you may not have seen that, but it doesn't cost the computer centers much time or money, and they expand the users a, a great deal. I, 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 I like what, what you presented here. I hope, I hope we'll see more digital humanity work here in our state. Thank you very much. But I think, I think there was also some speakers around the subject of uh, game studies and computer games. Computer games are a prime example of why the division of the faculties is outdated. I mean, there, there are all sorts of ways in which the division between science and engineering, humanities, arts, and so on like that uh, makes sense. But computer games, you know, if you want to run a decent game design program, uh, you're going to bring in expertise from, an from animators, from drama, uh, film people. Uh, so all sorts of interesting questions, like the questions around computer games, are ones that cross uh, these boundaries. These boundaries are 19th century German research institute boundaries that we should not, I mean, we always have to have boundaries of some sort or another. I'm not saying blow up the university structure. I'm just saying don't let it constrain you. So I'm just supporting what you're saying. Any other questions for Dr. Rockwell? You must have answered all of our questions or given us a lot of food for thought. Great. Well, thank you very much again for having me. Thank you very much.